Before I dig into refuting animation rewind part two, I need to backtrack just a little bit and talk about one of the points I made in part one. I said that Beerus and Goku did not come close to putting the universe in danger. At least that's what I meant to say. And I stand by that. The fact that there are an estimated 100 billion to 200 billion galaxies in the known universe, I don't, I don't see that they did anything close to that damage. Having said that, I acknowledge that this is fiction. And in the context of their story, it is a universal feat for Goku. So I'm sorry if I was misleading in that respect. Uh, I also said that Goku lacks feats. That's not to say he doesn't have any, but compared to Superman, he is lacking. Um, there are some things to note about this feat. He's not consistently that strong. Um, he did this with Beerus, but he still had struggled. You know, he, he was able to reach this form on his own now, and he struggled with uh, Golden, Golden Frieza. And Golden Frieza was able to pretty much kick his ass. If it wasn't for Vegeta's help, he would have never beaten Frieza. Now, I understand how powerful Golden Frieza is, but if he was able to annihilate the universe in just a few punches, Golden Frieza should have been a cakewalk. I could bring up the uh, fight with Frost, but I just don't, I don't want to kick Goku around too much. He is a good character this is not me trying to hate on Goku as much as it is just trying to refute some of the points that I feel animation rewind with great confidence they speak things but they're not really right I, I think that I need to expose those things is do a lot of Superman fans. A lot of people are seeing what Animation Rewind is doing and they want to expose it. And that's what I hope to do in these videos. Sorry for rambling, but I just wanted to get that out of the way. New 52 Superman even put his powers to the test. He traveled into the core of our planet to see how long he could lift it without getting tired out and Superman lifted the Earth for five straight days with zero exposure to sunlight. He was doing this so casually that the doctors behind the operation wanted to add a wormhole to put him to the test, but they were afraid to destroy the planet. So they just kept the Earth fair and square. And again, he did this for five straight days without getting a recharge. But what does this really mean? How strong does this really make Superman? Well, at the very least, if it took Superman one second to do one rep of lifting the Earth, this would mean that at the very least he lifted the Earth at least 432,000 times. He did this without rest or sunlight. This puts his strength easily at multi-solar system. The average galaxy has 500 billion stars and planets combined, but the average solar system only has around 12 planets. So, if we substitute one Earth rep with one planet, on average, Superman has the strength of lifting over 36,000 solar systems. Okay, I don't know if you can call what I'm about to say here a debunk or a refute, unless I'm refuting myself as well. But the point animation rewind just made... I want to say I kind of tried to make the same argument and everybody just said I was a fucking retard. So I don't know. I kind of get their logic there, but a lot of other people say that that's flawed. That if Superman, and it, it, it is an impressive feat to bench press the weight of the world for five days nonstop over and over again consistently, but... Uh, 
the argument is, the counter argument is that this is a high stamina feat, that he still, no matter how many times he does it, he's still just lifting the weight of the world, and that comes out to just that over and over again. It's impressive that he can keep doing it, but you can't credit him any more weight than the weight he was lifting. Another important time in the New 52 issue is during Superman's first battle with Doomsday. After the intense battle, Superman managed to tear Doomsday in half with his bare hands. Now, it is important to point out that New 52 Doomsday is not the strongest Doomsday in the DC Universe. However, this version of Doomsday still was designed to defeat New 52 Superman, and that version of Doomsday lost the fight. Okay, in terms of power, I don't know exactly how this Doomsday would match up to some other Doomsdays of the past, but I do know that uh, when he came, his very existence, when he emerged, the ocean, the water boiled around him, and it was also stated that the sand beneath his feet turned into black onyx. People burst into flames up to a hundred yards away, and uh, like just shit melted. And that was just being in his very presence. And that's how powerful this doomsday was. His his very presence caused havoc. This doomsday was an absolute beast, and Superman ripped him right in half. That is crazy powerful easily survive and escape from a black hole, plus traveling for two months non-stop into deep space. Escaping and surviving a black hole puts his speed above light and his durability above solar system level. Above solar system level. <laughs> that is an understatement. The black hole that Superman was in showed him other universes and also it was stated it wasn't a black hole it was black holes and he saw alternate universes this makes his feet multi-universal and if you understand anything about the weight of a black hole the size of this black hole lowballing that was a galaxy feat this universe busting feat when clashing with Beerus. The best debunk for this claim is the torting cake theory, or in other words, the super toothpick theory. Now to understand these theories, pretend that the world is actually a cake and that Goku is a toothpick. If the Goku toothpick tries to lift the earth slash cake, he would just rip through it and not actually lift it. This is because he is so small and sharp compared to everything around him, that no material would be able to stay intact during the lift. This brings up two points. One, if Goku and Superman actually existed in the real world with real world physics, none of them would be able to scientifically move the Earth on their own, because nothing on this planet has the density to stay intact if the whole planet is being pulled from its gravity. And two, if Goku punches anything that is weaker than Beerus, in his full-powered god form, that said thing would instantly turn into splattered pudding. Beerus was able to help create those universal shock waves because he could tank and ricochet those punches. Anything or anyone else who would have tried to absorb those punches would have been splattered like a bug. But Goku has been in his Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan form. And he punched Golden Frieza. Animation Rewind shown him punching Golden Frieza. And the same impact he had with Beerus wasn't there. You know, Beerus is a very powerful character. He's called the God of Destruction. He ripped the planet in half with his finger. 
with no effort, he could do massive damage. I don't deny their power. I don't deny the fact that a universe might have been in trouble, but let's lowball. I'm sorry, let's highball this power. Let's say that the ripping in half with a finger feet, he did that with less than 1% of his power. If he used 100% of his power, there is still nothing that suggests that Beerus could destroy 100,000, I'm sorry, God, 100 billion galaxies. There's nothing that suggests he could destroy 100 billion galaxies. There's nothing that suggests Goku could destroy 100 billion galaxies. That is an, a very low estimate to how big their universe may be. But I'm saying they have not displayed that kind of power. The show states they put the universe in danger if the clash would have continued uh, for just a little while the universe would have been destroyed and you know i'm not denying that it was a universal feat i am simply showing that goku cannot destroy a universe with just a few punches he has never shown that kind of strength ever neither is beerus they're very powerful characters, but they they are not annihilating 100 billion galaxies. That power has not been displayed. They're not showing that. I'm sorry, but it's simply not there. The third point is that Goku only shook the whole universe, but this quote-unquote debunk only contradicts itself and actually proves that Goku can destroy the universe. Goku's punch shook the universe instead of destroying it, specifically because Goku wasn't even punching the universe, he was punching Beerus. When Goku landed his punch on Beerus, Beerus being like any other thing in existence, is going to ingratiate the physical contact. Goku wasn't punching a universe, he was punching Beerus. Before I dig into his main point, I just want to say this. Uh, a universe is absolutely everything. What is a universe? Your window is part of the universe. Your grass is part of the universe. Your uh, pubic hair is part of the universe. Uh, a house is part of the universe. A tree is part of the universe. A turd is part of the universe, the sky, the clouds, the stars, the galaxy. When you punch something, you are punching your universe. The universe is absolutely everything. Everything and anything is the universe. So when he was punching Beerus, he was punching the universe because they were inside a universe. Beerus is part of the universe. He was punching the universe. So... That's false. He wasn't punching the universe. He was punching Beerus. I know that's stupid, but it's still true. Going to display and measure the power of the integration. This is how earthquakes and tsunamis are measured. So because the aftershock wave of the punch shook the whole universe, this means that the force that both Beerus and Goku felt were universal punches. Now I know some of you are still not going to accept any of these claims, but then at the very least if you want to give Beerus half the credit, which my second point debunks, but if you want to indeed give Beerus half the credit, then at the very least Goku can destroy half the universe in just three punches. And if he can destroy half the universe with three punches, how much of the universe do you think he can destroy with six punches? This case has been closed. This case has been closed. Of course, if you ignore the fact that it hasn't. Um, it was a decent argument that, that the ripple effect can cause a lot of havoc and a lot of chaos. And indeed, Beerus and Goku did that. But still... The point remains that if you scale the size of a universe, 
there was nothing in their battle that did that kind of damage. And also, Goku, by himself, still has not displayed that kind of power. Again, this is fiction, and the story, the narration, stated that they were doing that kind of damage. So it was a universal feat, but I still think that there's nothing that suggests Goku can destroy a universe in a few punches. Animation Rewind did nothing to prove that point. They created a straw man argument and they said the case is closed. That's what they did. They were being very deceptive. This There's a lot of deception here. This is dishonest scaling. The biggest reason why New 52 Superman lost is not really because Goku is powerful, but because New 52 Superman is one of the weakest Superman in the DC Universe. It is a close call between New 52 and Animated Series, but the fact is that New 52 is weak compared to other Superman. I just want to say that I disagree with that. I don't, I do not think. New 52 is all that weak. I, in fact, I think he's highly underrated. But I do believe that Animation Rewind believes that. So let's set aside how powerful New 52 Superman was slash is. And uh, let's go with what Animation Rewind is saying here. So let me get this straight. This is the third fight between Superman and Goku. Goku lost to pre-crisis Superman, but Goku defeated post-crisis Superman. So to have a tiebreaker, you put him up against New 52 Superman. And this is like the one to see who's actually better. And at the end of it, you say, but Goku didn't win because he's so strong. He won because New 52 Superman is so weak. It was a close call between him and animated series Superman. But New 52 is one of the weakest Superman. By that logic, how is this your best option for the third fight between the two? Uh, again, I think that he's underrated. But if you do feel that way, why not pick another incarnation of Superman that in your eyes would have been a better fight? Uh, I, I don't understand your logic here. I think that that is a poor judgment. And clearly, by that logic, you handpicked this Superman so Goku could win. The last scene with New 52 Superman Solar Flare versus Super Saiyan Blue Goku's Kamehameha. The problem with the Solar Flare ability is that Superman saves it as a last resort. If this power is an absolute last resort, then this means that Superman is nearly depleted and empty in terms of energy. So his Solar Flare is only going to release what he has left, and what he has left is not much. In fact, the strongest Solar Flare is barely city level. Even Batman stated it was only city level, and no one argues with Batman. Now Goku is also a guy who likes to save his Kamehameha towards the end of his battles, but at the very least, these blasts have been shown time and time again to be well above planet level, while Superman's Solar Flare is only city level. When Superman first used his super flare, he was nearly drained of power. However, his super flare, when he isn't drained of power, he has one shot at Galactic Gollum. Galactic Gollum is a living get a living galaxy. Superman New 52 Superman, that weak one with his city level super flare, has one shotted a galaxy. Superman one shotted a living galaxy when he's at full power using his super flare. That is insane. If he, from the get go, uses that against Goku. I strongly believe he would one-shot him. 
with that said I have to give credit where credit is due it I was not even aware that this comic existed until I watched Dave Valor's video Dave Valor is a youtuber who mainly reviews new 52 Superman the video where I got this from and I did read the comment for myself afterwards but the video where I got this from I will post a link of his in the description I highly recommend David Fla David Valor he has made some very good videos and he's very good at scaling he's way better at scaling than I am but yeah uh, new 52 Superman solar flare uh, super flare is very underrated in at full power at the very least it's galaxy level if not higher than that this episode will have two superman battles saitama versus animated series superman and saitama versus cosmic armor superman mother of all mismatches cosmic armor superman would 100% without a doubt solo the entire One Punch Man universe to date. Animated series Superman is one of the weakest Superman in the DC universe. He's nowhere near limitless, he's never done anything infinite, and he can be easily killed by multiple enemies. For those complaining that animated series Superman is just a random point in the Superman timeline, please note this. There's no such thing as a Superman timeline. Whoever told you that was straight up lying to you. Each Superman has their own timeline. There's not one official Superman timeline, it's a multiverse. You can't mesh these things together, that's insane. If animated series Superman was able to die from things that weren't planetary, what do you think would happen when Saitama's serious punch lands on him? Let's just say that Superman's gonna have a bad time. For the most part, I can agree with this reasoning. I don't think there are too many Superman that I would say Saitama can beat. However, I could see him winning over animated series Superman uh, he has struggled with some people that I believe that Saitama could indeed one shot I will say that animated series Dark Side is more powerful than Boris and that is probably one of animated series Superman's best feats but, however, it was stated at the end of the Boris battle that Saitama was holding back and Superman was cutting loose against that dark side. So, I can agree with this one. But, putting that aside, there is one huge problem that was revealed later. This guy put... Saitama under Popeye. Popeye has never shown any feat that would compare to either Saitama or Superman. He's typically big gay sailor level. So I, I think that that is very poorly done, but that is another video. It's it's just to me it's it's Poor scaling on this guy's behalf. So what about this Cosmic Armor guy? How'd he beat Saitama? Did you not hear the explanation? Cosmic Armor Superman has the ability to not only copy his enemy's powers, but to surpass them. That's like saying who would win in a fight? Saitama or Saitama times two? Obviously Saitama times 2 would win because Saitama times 2 is twice as strong, fast, and durable than Saitama 1. There's no debate when you're facing Cosmic Armor Superman. Cosmic Armor Superman is meant to attack the plot device. 
which means he's meant to always win. He's not meant for versus debate series. Again, animation rewind is correct here. However, this is my problem. Here's my problem. They use the absolute most powerful Superman here against Saitama. And it suggests they had to do that. I mean, okay, they didn't do it. It, it irks me because it's suggesting to people that they had to do that for Superman to win which is is absolutely incorrect there are several incarnations of Superman that would curb stomp Saitama cosmic armor Superman wasn't needed I believe even though this is still an overkill a better matchup for cosmic armor Superman would be like Dragon Ball Super Universe in the One Punch Man universe versus Cosmic Armor Superman. I believe that that would be better and more educational for people as to how powerful the uh, Cosmic Armor Superman actually is, aka Thought Robot Superman, whichever you prefer to call him. But, all in all, I actually didn't think the Saitama vs. Superman video was bad as far as, I think he's correct. I, I just think he could have handpicked somebody better for to beat Saitama. But, anyway, that's it for this, for part two. Peace.